Welcome everyone. Good morning. I think I count 12 children today. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, welcome everyone. Happy New Year. My name is Eileen. I'll be giving the talk today and the topic is thoughts will change your mind. Interesting topic. I'm sending blessings to everyone who made it out here today to share time and spirit with us. And a special thank you to those who are watching this at home on YouTube. We feel and we embrace your energy. We are in the earth virtue of Capricorn, the sign of temperance. Blessings to our fellow brothers and sisters who chose to enter this life during the energy of temperance. And blessings to those who left this experience during the energy of temperance, including our founder, Norm Paulson, who left on the 30th of December, a day none of us will ever forget. I am confident that each one of you here, or if you're participating online, have been touched by the energy of the Masters and are grateful for their guidance towards reaching our life goals and co-creating with hope, love, and kindness. An interesting topic. I spent a lot of time studying on what to say today. But let's start with the thought of loving yourself. Loving yourself is loving God. Serve for the divine in each of us and practice the service of God. Everything we do is in the presence of the divine. So start by loving yourself and share that love, thoughts of love and energy with every being in our cosmos. And I mean love for all, everyone, everything. Think about the one person you dislike the most. you got to love them. Very important. Change your thoughts because that person is still part of God, of our co-creator. This energy thought alone, love, can change the trajectory of our universe and our world. Then be grateful. Just grateful. Forgive yourself and forgive others without judgment. This is the path to the pure in heart. Those who understand that truly we are all one with the Creator. Pure love, that is the remedy. Swami Jiri Gary guidance from Paramahansa Yogananda on how to develop fearlessness, an essential quality in living a happy and fulfilling life. Fear disrupts our natural inner harmony causing mental, mental, physical, and spiritual disturbances. Now, I know all of us have had a highway patrolman come up behind us with the lights blaring and the siren, and you immediately do this. That's that moment of fear. You have to overcome that. But as we learn to live more in the calm interior silence of the soul, we discover our inner sanctuary where worries and fears cannot intrude, and where we are ever safe and secure in our oneness with the divine. So here's a thought came to me a few weeks ago. Love is a standalone concept, a direct connection to God, our infinite source of love that connects soul to the universe of all creation. Love is not the opposite of hate. Ambivalence is the opposite of hate, unlike the opposite of like. Dolores Cannon once said, there is no good, there is no bad, there are only experiences. So we are all God. We came from the same source, and we're part of it. And we will continue to be part of it. Love is the basis of everything. Equating love with hate is a concept to control, divide, conquer, 
Remove the two of them from being joined together. Just focus on love. When you change your thoughts and change your mind, see the beauty in every living being during your walk in this existence. Parhamanda Yogananda said, Will is the instrument of the image of God within you. In will lies his limitless power, the power that controls all the forces of nature. Good way to start the day and changing your thought and changing your mind is meditate. Start your day with a daily meditation. We offer Zoom meditations every morning, five mornings a week. Join us. It's a great way to start the day. Show love to your soul by making that connection with the Creator every single day. And in your daily interactions with others, beware aware of your responses. So easy just to snap back. Just stop and think about where you are at that moment. Find peace within yourself before responding and then conduct all of your interactions with love. And when you're in a challenging situation, study what you're feeling. Dig deep. Dig deep within yourself. Set aside your ego and respond with kindness and love in your heart. I know that's sometimes difficult when you're in working and something just sets you off, but it's good just to stop. Give it a little bit of time before you respond. When speaking, do so consciously. You know, words are energy. They can affect you and those around you. Yogananda stated, making others happy through kindness of speech and sincerity of right advice is a sign of true greatness. To hurt another soul by sarcastic words, looks, or suggestions is despicable. In our daily walk of life, when you're associating with your colleagues, look for that place in your heart center and balance with kindness and love. What I tell myself when I'm in a situation at work, and I work with a lot of doctors, is I only want to get to yes. I don't care what their ego is. I don't care what my ego is. I only want to get to yes and move on. And be loving to your body. When beginning a meal, take a few moments and say, send a prayer of gratefulness. We are so fortunate to have such an abundance of nourishment. We are so grateful for that. During the activities of daily living, including housework or yard work, be kind to your body, be calmly active, actively calm, as Yogananda said. I'm the one person that'll get started on a project, and even when my body's saying you need to sit down, I'll keep going. I've had to learn to stop doing that. It's, it's easy to do. And be loving and kind during times of recreation and association, and embrace the unknown. Embrace with a loving and kind heart during all of your interactions. All creatures, large and small, have been given, gifted the same amount of life spark. We are all equal in the eyes of the Creator, our source. It is how we utilize that gift of spark, our light, the flame contained within our breath connected to our soul, and the heart center that determines the outcome. Yogananda wrote in Where There Be Light, one of my favorite quotes, You are a spark of eternal flame. You can hide the spark, but you can never destroy it. So step forward with loving thoughts from the center of your heart, where our divine parents reside. Send that loving energy throughout the ethereal self into Mother Gaia, return it through the top of our head, Spirit Divine, where our soul connection resides. 
So as we prepare to go into meditation, take a moment to check your posture. If you're in a chair or in a meditation mat, make certain that your spine is properly supported and your knees are below your hips. Make sure your feet are flat on the ground with your legs uncoupled. And then look for that space between your eyes, your third eye. Just gently massage it for a moment, bringing your attention, and then begin to envision a six-pointed star. And as so often we experience, if thoughts distract you, go back to your breath. Your pranayama, that connection between your spirit and your soul, pay attention to the sensations as the breath enters the nose and as it flows down your spine, envision a flame rising up as the flow of air leaves your body. Continue gazing at the six-pointed star, the third eye. Then adjust your chin along any of the spine, preparing it for the circulations and feel as though your back and head are leaning against a wall. And then take a moment to envision a golden thread at the top of your head, pulling your spine erect. We're going to listen to a short clip by Norm from his amazing recording, The Pearl of Great Price, and then be led into meditation with the gentle sound bath of bowls. St. Paul on the road to Damascus to persecute the Christian was stopped dead in his tracks by the vision and the sudden conflagration of a light that was above the brightness of the sun that was shining. God is that light, that wondrous light. Once you've seen it, you can never see enough of it. I argue with God that I don't get to see as much as I'd like to see of that face, that light. And the Lord says, I want to make sure that you still love me. Master Yogananda used to say, God is like a little child, seeking our love, waiting for us to give our love and attention in that direction. Yes, God is like a jealous child at times. If we ignore, he ignores, she ignores. But by the steady application of desire and meditation, God comes. When we least expect it, the light strikes.
As we transition out of meditation, take a moment to notice how you feel sharing these precious minutes in fellowship. Each one of us here today, meditating in fellowship, are experiencing the joy of co-creating and striving to elevate and raise the energy level closer and one with the Creator. Our founder, Norm Paulson, wrote in Sacred Science, Be temperate in all pursuits. The pearl of great price is self-realization, cosmic or Christ consciousness. Be temperate in thoughts and in actions and with the development of your physical, mental, and spiritual attributes. The Bhagavad Gita states, Yoga is the difficult attainment by the ungoverned man, but he who is self-controlled will, by striving through proper methods, be able to achieve it. So you are welcome to talk story during conscious speech and recreation in the lodge. We're going to be joining in the blessings of conscious nourishment. And you can share with us your memories, your dreams and reflections of faith, hope, and love, and how self-control has evolved in your daily life. You are invited to join us daily for Zoom fellowship offered throughout the week, and you can contact the office for more information. Remember to practice kindness to our Mother Earth. The Holy Land is wherever you are and wherever you step. So step with loving kindness on our Mother Gaia and know that all beings are native to her. We do breathe the same air. Most of all, thank you, Great Spirit, our Creator, for the opportunity to experience this life. Be thankful for the trials, the tribulations, the happy and the sad times, and be grateful for your life's adventures. All of that is what brought you here today, right now. Remember, be calmly active and actively calm. And Yogananda said, read a little, Meditate more. Thank God all the time. And Norm used to often say, Life loves God. When he was at the ashram, he would have long conversations with the other monks and they would ask him, his, how did he get there? What was his experiences? And his answer was always, I just love God. That was always his answer. So I'm going to close the service today with this mantra. Let me know if you want me to send it to you, I will. Today, 
I will be the best and most authentic version of myself practicing and mastering self-love and see myself in others when I look into their eyes. I said this to someone recently and they said, whenever I look into the eyes of others, I see God. Well, that's good. Let's look into the other eyes of others and let's see God. So blessings for the new year. It is my sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to spread good cheer all through the year, through the rest of the day. Love everyone and everything we encounter. that unfold within. Our spirits will ride the wind. God's love will bind us again. We're free to fly again on wings that unfold within. Our spirits will ride the wind. God's love will to try again this time we're gonna win the light that shone within is shining here again we're free to fly again on wings that unfold within our spirit
that shone within is shining here again. We're free to fly again on wings that unfold within. Our spirits will ripen in God's love. Show. Sure.